This is a green laser pointer shining through some olive oil. Can you see how the beam goes red when it goes through the oil? This is a violet laser pointer and you get the same effect. I've turned the camera exposure down so you can see the colours more clearly. This is um, sunflower oil. When I shine the violet laser pointer through it you get this gorgeous white beam. And this is water. Nothing. What we're seeing here is fluorescence. We know that atoms are made from nucleuses surrounded by electrons. And we know that electrons can only exist in discrete orbits. When light hits an electron, it gains energy and moves to a higher orbit. A short time later, that electron may drop to a lower orbit and release some energy as a photon of light. The way that light energy is absorbed and re-released by an atom tells us a lot about what the atom is made of. And we can understand those interactions from the light that comes off of the atom. And in fact, usually atoms are arranged into complex molecules, and so the wavelengths which emerge, the colours of light which emerge from these molecules, can be very complicated indeed. Analysing light from molecules like these and from other sources too is often done with an instrument called a spectrograph or a spectrometer. This is my homemade spectrometer. It's called the IFOS, and I make them for sale. It's a cardboard tube. With a tripod mount here. At this end, there's a slit arrangement. This is a 5mm slit. There are lots of others, different widths. This is an experimental uh, diffuser prototype slit plate, which I'm using to experiment with absorption spectra. And at the other end of the instrument, there is the uh, sensor head which this one is again a prototype but what you can see is a diffraction grating. Production models don't have this tape, I'm experimenting with something which doesn't concern us really but this is the diffraction grating and this is the camera sensor. A USB tube passes out here. There's also a diaphragm and some bits and pieces in there. Um, the reason the instrument is long is because it uses the front slip plate, a central diaphragm and distance to collimate the incoming light source and that means there are no optical components inside except for those things and that means the uh, instrument is less expensive to build and the raw materials less expensive which is the reason why I can sell it so cheaply. It plugs into USB on any Windows PC back to Vista and the software is a free download. Before every session with the IFOS you should recalibrate it, make sure it's reading accurately and that's done with a standard compact fluorescent light bulb. I need to fit the one millimeter slip plate for that. Just align it with a light source using the spectrometer's display. I'm just playing with the exposure settings on the software to get a good exposure uh, so that nothing's saturated or in the noise floor. And I'll turn on the colour display so we can get an immediate indication of what wavelengths and colours we're talking about. These compact fluorescent lamps or CFLs are a good choice for a calibration source because um, they've got lots of spiky features and although they do vary from manufacturer to manufacturer two lines, two mercury lines at 436 in the blue and 546 in the green are always exactly the same and those are what we use to calibrate. Although the main bulk of the, uh, uh, the, the colour we can see is green at 531, far more energy is being radiated at um, about 800 in the infrared and a little bit at 907 as well. 
So there's that. The red laser is uh, doing its job. So what's going on? Why do we get these infrared peaks for the green and the violet lasers, but not for the red one? Well, when you build a laser point, you start with an enclosure and you put um, a solid state laser diode in there. And if it's a red one, job done. When you've put a lens in there to collimate the beam, that's all you need. But it turns out you can't build green lasers the same way. What you have to do instead is build an infrared laser radiating around the 800 nanometer level and then you insert a magic crystal of KTP which we all know stands for potassium titanyl phosphate, right? And it doubles the frequency of the light entering it. Now doubling the frequency is the same as halving the wavelength which then comes to around 400 nanometers and that's visible light in the green area. This is a process called pumping. So this KTP is being pumped at 800 nanometers to make green light around 440, somewhere around there. The problem with this approach is that not all the radiation coming from the pumping diode or pumping laser is converted into uh, the frequency doubled radiation. Quite a lot of the infrared gets past the KTP and emerges as, as infrared light you can fit an infrared filter to remove that infrared light um, or at least to prevent it coming out of the laser pointer. The problem there is that it's infrared light, it's heat so that means the laser pointer gets hot and destroys itself. So cheap laser pointers don't bother with the filter and that's why the radiation emerges in the way that we saw in the graph which the IFOS showed us. There it is. I'm going to offset the vial or the cuvette like this so that you can see there's no red radiation coming from the laser pointer at all, just those two peaks we saw earlier. And then when we move the vial into place, the, ultra, the infrared peak disappears and a red peak appears and that's purely the fluorescent light being generated inside the olive oil when its atoms and molecules are stimulated by the laser pointer. And if we look at the IFOS display we can see that that fluorescence um, is, is about 6, what is it, 670, 680, which is exactly what the literature expects. So we saw some odd behavior when you shine laser light into olive oil and sunflower oil. We identified that behavior as fluorescence and explained it in terms of moving energy levels light emission and absorption in atoms and molecules. Then we had a quick look at the IFOS spectrometer, purchase details below. We saw how to calibrate it. And then we used it to find these surprising peaks coming from the laser pointers in the infrared, which we explained in terms of how laser pointers in some colors are constructed. Then we used it to measure the fluorescence of olive oil and found the, with the red peak exactly where it should be on the spectrum. Well I hope you enjoyed the video uh, please like, rate, subscribe and if you'd like to buy a spectrometer click the link and thanks for watching. Mm -hmm.